Step, point, cross, push. One, two, one, two, ready, move, one, two. Good morning, students and staff of Glenbard West High School. May homecoming 1990 be your most memorable. Magic! This magic moment While your lips are close to mine will last forever they're going to return the damn ball with the best they got. School starting, and it's time to elect a homecoming queen. Hey, Jim. How you doing? How are you? Nice to see you. Mr. Daryl. How are you? Uh, well, I understand there's a lot of things happening in your life. Yeah, quite a lot. So, What's going on? How can I help? Just, um, I don't know how you can help, but there's just a lot of pressures, you know, just uh, from girlfriend pressures. Like, she came up here today. I don't know what she came up here for, but uh, she was uh, had a few choice words to say to me. Like, uh, why is your, what happened to my ring? Well, this is a, you know, particularly tense time for both of you. Things aren't going to go very well. Mm -hmm. um, well, I do want to talk to her, you know, I'd like to get like on a one-on-one -on -one basis with her, but there's really no way that I can, I can contact her and talk to her, but everything that I say to her goes back to her parents. All right, ladies and gents, it's uh, homecoming voting time. Okay, we have the ballots for a homecoming queen. Kelly Roth would be my, Kelly would be my probably guess. Colleen Blackford. She's pretty nice. She's a really nice person. So. The, the part about the homecoming queen and stuff is a little um, waste of time comes to mind, uh, useless. dad's intense and I think that uh, his dad's intensity puts a, a pressure on Sean both good and bad but Sean's very aware of that pressure that's the way to wrestle I just don't think that his dad when it comes to wrestling really likes to share Sean that's just I think it's that way just that way with you know a father and a son and I don't want to interrupt it or you know anything so I just have to deal with it <laughs> Well, I like the fact that she's easy to talk to. I mean, when when you have problems or, or when you just want to talk to somebody, she's there. Because I don't have a way with words all the time. A great deal of high school life is intertwined with relationships in and out of the classroom as in the case of varsity football player Mark Palicki, who's in the process of learning a lot about a very close relationship with his mother. Mark, you should probably have a sweater or a sweatshirt on today because it's cool outside. Today's the 1st of October. So if you're going to homecoming, three weeks, you gotta give a girl three weeks notice, remember? That's the rule. Nothing can replace, I don't think, the special relationship a mom has with her sons. And Mark's our youngest. We only have two children. So I may have a tendency to hang on a little bit more.
Although Glen Ellen is a world away from the streets of Chicago, gang tentacles creep into the suburbs as well. I figured if I joined a gang, I'd probably be somebody. People would know me. I'd, I'd be known. I, I mean, you can go out on the street corners, you know, and if you want drugs, you know, you can get drugs no matter what, you know, and you can have somebody get, you know, like beaten to death if you want to just by the snap of your fingers. And then it got really attractive. I mean, that's when I started, you know, getting really hardcore at it. I mean, I'd do anything to stay in this, you know. They're, you know, they'd ask you, would you die for this? Which I, you know, I said at the time, yeah, I would. And then that's when I really started thinking, you know, when I went home that night, I thought, wait, why would I want to die for this? You know, I'm not going to die and leave my family and everything for a gang. Normally, when these kids want to get out of a gang, they have to be V'd out which means take their violation, um, which in the case of a guy could mean just taking a beating from the other gang members. So they have said that they're either going to V him out or they may let him walk. I don't know. Well, could you tell me where I can find Detective McMahon? Yes, sir. Go right down the hall, first door, make a left. And now here's the Bridge family. Another full-time job, being a wife and mother. You promised me we could go skiing. This year, Mrs. Bridge is also a student, writing her doctoral dissertation. This is very painful. You know, my family's real used to hearing the creaking of boards at 3 a.m. This has been the front page that I have, think, I think I have read millions of. Now, the ones that I have here are only the ones that I need for my last chapter of the 60s. I have gone through similar documents bound in a similar fashion. Okay, now remember, watch me. We go to JD's. Okay, we'll pick you up after for soccer. Okay. It's a school day for everyone, including the principal. Hey, Miss Bridge. Hey, Roy. How you doing? How are you doing? Oh, I'm having a great time here. Want help? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so how you doing? Good. Yeah. Yeah, just. What going off for a little walk. As for Roy, what about all the what about all the stuff we talked about? His graduation is problematic, but hopefully he's learned the best lesson school can teach. It's hard work, not sweet talk, that makes for achievement. Such a little while left, and a whole lot of effort you got to put in. Yep. So think about that when you're enjoying this great weekend. Enjoy this weather. I know. Yeah. Well, listen, <laughs> take your kiddo. All right. All right. Take it easy, Mr. Bye. -bye. Am I gonna miss you? No. No! <laughs> oh, yes. For the 372 seniors of Glenbard West High School, it's been a year filled with laughter and tears. Memories. For these graduates, a chapter in their lives is coming to a close. Gathered before us this afternoon are nearly 400 young men and women whose roles in life are about to change before our very eyes. It gives me great pleasure to present to you the Glenbard West High School Class of 1991.